dessert chef Anna Olson. If you're looking to make a grand dessert for a festive family gathering, well, I've got just the ticket. Trifle is traditional, and I do love it, but my Black Forest trifle, well, that is something special. I love that combination of chocolate, cherries, and cream. So I'll start off by making a chocolate sponge cake. A trifle has a combination of cake, cream, and fruit. So let me just set my chocolate aside here. And I've got four whole eggs with two egg yolks, and I'm going to add to that one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar. So this is a sponge cake. You can do it in a mixer or with electric beaters. She's using a stand mixer. You want to whip this on high speed for five minutes and also make sure your eggs are at the very least room temperature, or you can even warm them in their shells in hot tap water. You'll get better volume that way. She flips it on and we watch the ingredients blend. And later, And I sift my dry ingredients, two thirds of a cup of all purpose flour. Into a sifter. And a third of a cup of cocoa powder. She now sifts them onto parchment paper, tapping the last of them out at the end. I find it easier to add my dry ingredients while the mixer's going on low speed. You can fold it in by hand, but you run more of a risk of getting little lumps, little pockets of flour left in your batter. She turns on the stand mixer again, then lifting the parchment paper with the dry ingredients on it, brings together two of its edges, forming a tube that makes them simple to pour now. And when they're fully incorporated later, she removes the whisk and the bowl from the mixer. Now she whisks by hand. There we go. Now. This sponge is rather pale in color now. It almost looks like milk chocolate, but as it bakes, that color will intensify and you get that full chocolate She flavor. taps the whisk clean on the side of the bowl. Now, the last thing to do is add two tablespoons of melted butter. And if I were to pour my melted butter right into the sponge cake batter, it would sink to the bottom. And actually, when you bake the sponge cake, you would have a dense layer at the bottom of it. So what I do is I pour the butter into a small dish and I just take a nice big dollop of my sponge batter. With a spatula. And I combine that with the butter. So this little bit of batter might deflate a little bit, but now the butter is mixed into it. So when I add it- She pours it back into the mixer bowl. To the big batch of batter, it's easier to incorporate. And now she uses the spatula to mix it all together. Remembering to scrape the sides of the bowl too. I have a nine inch cake pan. I've lined the bottom with parchment, but I've left the sides ungreased. When you're baking a sponge cake, you actually want the cake to stick to the sides of the pan as it rises up. That will help hold the volume as it bakes and sets. She now pours her batter into the springform pan. It's a beautiful thick batter. I've preheated my oven to 350. And this sponge cake takes 45 minutes to bake. I check the doneness by tapping the top at the center. If it springs back, then I know it's done. All right, now we've got the cake looked after when it comes to this Black Forest trifle. Now it's time for the cream or the custard. A traditional trifle has a pastry cream or a vanilla style pudding. Well, with a Black Forest cake, I wanna layer in the chocolate. So I'm going to make a chocolate cream cheese filling. It's kind of like chocolate custard meets cheesecake. I'll start by pouring in most of my three cups of milk. Into a saucepan. So like a pastry cream. On the stove. I need some eggs and I'll thicken this with cornstarch. I've got three eggs and I just need the yolks. She uses the shell to separate the yolk from the white by pouring them back and forth. She then adds her yolks to the bowl. I'll add to the eggs a third of a cup of granulated sugar, a quarter of a cup of cornstarch, and I'll whisk in that remaining cold milk. It just makes it easier to add the hot milk to this base mixture. She whisks all those ingredients together by hand. Now that my milk is just starting to simmer. On the stove. Turn it down slightly, and you can either ladle this or pour it right into the egg mixture. She whisks warm and cold together in her bowl. Back in the pot. Then returns it all to the saucepan, where she continues to whisk as it heats up. As I'm returning this to a simmer, I'll add my six ounces of chocolate. Cut into small cubes. This is dark couverture, so baking chocolate. You can use bittersweet or semi-sweet. The choice is yours. 
You'll see this chocolate custard start to thicken. As it also bubbles. But you want to keep going until you actually see some bubbles break the surface. That way you know the cornstarch is fully activated and it's as thick as it needs to be. Oh, it looks so good. There we go. I'll take this off the heat and add a splash of vanilla. Straight from the bottle. So this would be delicious in the trifle all on its own. But the holidays are kind of all about adding those little bit extras and taking things to the next level. She reaches for another ingredient. So I'm turning this custard into a cheesecake chocolate custard. I have two packages, 500 grams of cream cheese. And I'm going to pour the hot custard over this. So the cream cheese actually serves a purpose here. It cools down the custard a little bit. And then I'll just use an immersion blender to blend everything together. She slips the blender wand into the mixture and keeps moving it in a circular pattern. And later, she taps the wand clean on the side of the bowl, then scrapes down the sides with a spatula. Mm, doesn't that look good? I know this seems quite fluid right now, but between the cream cheese and the chocolate, once this cools and chills, it sets up beautifully and oh, layered with the chocolate sponge cake. Of course, some cherries. I have four cups of cherry filling. You can make your own by cooking pitted tart cherries with sugar and a little cornstarch. I throw in a bit of cinnamon stick, but you can also use a prepared cherry filling. Also, I have my famous fudge sauce filling. And then you grab your trifle bowl. I have been known to use a clear flower vase, whatever you have on hand, just so you see those beautiful layers. So the layers start with cake brushed with syrup, followed by chocolate cheesecake custard, fudge sauce, cherries, repeat, repeat, repeat. Now she builds those layers as she talks. All of these elements are typical to a black forest tort without having to go through the effort of making it. Next layer, once again, pieces of chocolate cake. She then pipes on more chocolate cheesecake filling, adds dollops of chocolate fudge sauce, then ladles on more cherries. Except for the whipped cream, you could assemble this trifle a full day, even two days ahead of time. But I do like to put on the whipped cream and a little grated chocolate close to when I plan on serving. She adds both of those now. Trifle truly is a holiday classic, but this Black Forest version, well, it makes a grand dessert that will get your family feeling so festive. And you can have a lot of people over with a trifle this size. So enjoy the moment, celebrate with family and friends, and happy holidays. She smiles.